on the table? I would certainly be in favor of putting the big box issue back on the table. Absolutely. I think everybody should earn a living wage and be able to support their family. Alderman Brookins, are you in the crosshairs of the union? I mean, they've targeted you. Uh... Absolutely. It's a big target on my back, but I think that it's somewhat disingenuous with respect to that uh, argument. Uh, one, there are workers now who are represented by the United Food and Commercial Workers. There are workers now who are represented by SEIU that don't get a living wage as defined by Service that order. Service employees internationally. That is correct. The other thing about it is I would not be in favor of the big box as long as it keeps Chicago at an economic disadvantage. And, and in my ward, unlike some of the other wards, we're less than a mile away from Evergreen Park in the suburbs where these big box retailers have located to and out there in those suburbs they are able to use our tax dollars because we go out there and every time we spend a dollar out of the 9.75 two percent goes would have gone to chicago if the dollar was spent in chicago one percent would have gone to the city of chicago uh, to cta if it had been spent in the city of chicago and in walmart alone in 2005 people from chicago spent a half a billion dollars in walmart we are shooting ourselves in the in the foot for a principle espoused by the unions to our own detriment. And we can't do that when we need the jobs and we need the economic growth and the city needs the money. How about or else that, we're going to have to raise taxes somewhere else. How about that, Mr. Jones? Is there a tax drain as a result of these surrounding communities where they don't have big box ordinances and, the, uh, and people spend their money, Evergreen Park, other suburbs? Absolutely not. There's not a tax drain. You say tax drain when they're taking uh, tax increment money and putting it in big business downtown. That's not a, the tax drain is not created by uh, not having employment. The tax drain, the tax drain, is being created because of the policies of the city of Chicago, taking money from the poor neighborhoods, from the schools, the parks, and the libraries, and putting it in big business downtown Chicago. That's where the tax drain is coming from, not from the neighborhoods. Alderman, in terms of, uh, let's, let's talk politics for a second. Sure. Uh, the mayor is backing you. Is the support that the mayor is in a position to give you enough to offset the fact that the unions are working against you? Well, one, we not only have the mayor, but we also have other independent people throughout the city that are helping us. Uh, we have Bill Doc Walls. We have Jesse Jackson, Jr. We have Jesse Jackson, Sr. Uh, we have the help. I have uh, one of the former opponents, Sylvia Jones. So we have a, a, a bunch of people throughout the city that are helping us. And yes, we believe that that is enough with our, the support from our friends to overcome the $354,000 to date that the unions have given Mr. Jones. And yet, in spite of the fact that uh, you cite these people who support you, you're in a runoff. You didn't get the 50% plus well, that was I, needed. I, I agree with that, but. Uh, I attribute that to there being five people in the race and that as long as, for example, you were in the race, there's nothing I could do, nothing I could say to convince your mother to vote for me. And so that there were just too many people in the race at the particular time. And I don't view it as, uh, say, 54% of the people not voting for me. I view that as 54% of the people voting for somebody else. Because you got, you got 46% of the vote in correct. the uh, primary. Mr. Jones, you got 34% of the vote. You work full-time for a union. According to the Sun-Times, 96% of your campaign funds are union funds funds. Uh, Mr. Brookins has, has said that you're a labor puppet. Are you a labor puppet? Well, I'm not a labor puppet. I don't uh, dance to anybody's music. I'm an independent person. When I wanted to run for alderman, I thought about it. Somebody needs to step up and uh, do something to represent the members in the 21st Ward. I went to organize labor myself. I asked them for their support. I'm proud to be a union member, I'm proud to get union support. And I have 8,000 AFL-CIO members in that ward that are working people in that ward. So, but I'm not only gonna work for the working people, I'm gonna work for those people that are unfortunate that does not have a job. I'm gonna work for those people that need to have better education, public safety on the streets. That's what I'm gonna be working how, for. How can he? Uh, his whole livelihood, his whole existence, his whole being, his whole campaign is financed by the unions. Uh, he works for the unions. They control him. Presumably they could fire him. Uh, how can he be any type of an independent person when, and, and, and my record show is more like 97.6% of his money has come from the unions uh, directly 
uh, uh, from either SEIU or people that we can trace back who have affiliations to unions. And Mr. Jones, a final response to that, uh, to that comment. I'm proud to have the support of organized labor. I am a person that has been for, the, for all of my working life, I've worked for a union versus my opponent. My opponent has never worked in a union. That's my not true. Well, I've, I've been a member of United well, Food speaking, and I'm Commercial speaking, Workers Mr. Union. I'm, I've been a member of, of ASME. I used to be a public defender. We were represented Mr. by a union. Well, Mr. you know what? I think you better put uh, both of you put those credentials on your websites because <laughs> we are out of time. Uh, Alderman Brookins, thank you for being here. Leroy Jones, thank you, sir, for being here thank as you. well. Thank you. And uh, I'll talk with a woman challenging long.